hope to many around the globe, transforming lives into legacies. Live in Word with Pastor Mensa Otobiel. And now, today's word. I'm just going to share and exhort you on receiving. Receiving. If you read the Bible, you realize that many people uh, who were touched by God knew how to receive from God. Abraham knew how to receive from God when, when messengers from God visited him. He knew how to receive them. Hannah knew how to receive a child from God after she had tried many years without any success. Samuel had to learn how to receive a word from God. When God called him at a young age, he had to be taught how to receive a word from the Lord. And uh, Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus, knew how to receive a word from the angel that visited her. Uh, it's important to know how to receive from God. I just want to teach a few things about receiving from God. Please go with me in your Bibles to Mark chapter 11 and verses 22 to 24. Mark chapter 11, 22 to 24. I've preached from this passage many times, but to say the same thing is always good for us. Um, the background of the story is that Jesus um, is ministering between around Jerusalem and the day before he had spoken to a fig tree and told the fig tree to be with it and uh, apparently nothing had happened until the next day in the morning Jesus is going back to Jerusalem and his disciples call to record that the fig tree that was cursed is, is not producing that with it and then in response to that Jesus speaks these words so he says so Jesus answered and said to them have faith in God for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. I will be focusing on the verse 24. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Them. There are three important words I want you to note in that passage. First is ask. Everybody say ask. The second is receive. Everybody say receive. And the third is have. Everybody say have. Now ask, receive, have. Ask, receive, have. When you pray, you ask. When you receive, he says believe. And then you shall have them. So let me go through the three things very clearly. Much of this uh, month, we've been doing the number one. We've been asking. Asking. Now, asking is always making a demand, seeking for something to come to you. And when we ask, it's important that we ask specifically. Specifically, remember Jesus says, whatever things, whatever things, things are not abstract. Things are not things moving in the air. Things are things that you can touch, you can see. They are real, they are specific. So when we ask, we have to be specific. You can't just say, God, bless me. With what? God, touch me. In what way? Uh, God, do something new in my life. What new? Because some new things you may not like. If God gives you a tail, you wouldn't like it. Say, God, do something new in my life and boom, tail. Woo, that's not what I wanted. No. What do you want God to do? You don't want a tail? So be specific. It's good to pray generally and say, Lord, do something new in my life. But you have to qualify what you are expecting him to do. Jesus many times when he wanted to, uh, to minister to people was, wanted them to be specific. Lord have mercy on me. That's general. And then he will come to them and ask what do you want? 
that I might see specific. Lord, have mercy, general, that I may see specific. Lord, bless me, general, that I may see specific. Lord, have favor on me, general, that I may prosper financially specific. So asking must be specific. What things soever you desire. There has to be whatever things. Whatever things, whatever things you desire, you pray. Asking should be specific. Asking should also be according to God's will. Asking should be according to God's will. You have a specific desire, but that specific desire must fit into God's general will. You, you can't ask for something that is against God's will. That, oh Lord, you know, I'm going to steal, uh, I'm going to go on operation, steal in operation tonight, and Lord, I ask you, protect me. Now he says, thou shalt not steal. So that prayer cannot fit into his will, although uh, you may think you need protection for your job, your night duty. Your night duty is outside of God's will. So, when we ask specifically, that specific thing must fit into God's will. Into God's will. God's will is like the room, a room. Your desire must fit into that room. If it doesn't fit there, then you pray all you want. It cannot be done. If you pray that God will kill your enemies, for example, uh, it, it may be a prayer you're praying. And I, I don't know whether you've been praying that, you know, some people, when it's time for prayer, that's all they're praying. Lord, kill my enemy. Lord, kill my enemy. Lord, kill my enemy. Now, you can say that a billion times, but nothing's going to happen. Your enemy will live. Because it doesn't fit into God's will. It's not God's will to kill your enemies, but that your enemies should come to repentance if they are not born again. The Bible says it's not his desire that any should perish. He wants all men saved. Even the one you hate, he wants him saved. Sometimes God allows wicked people to live for a very long time because he needs all the time to get them saved until they waste all their years. But he's going to give them time. He's not in a hurry to send people to hell. Now you may be in a hurry, but he's not in a hurry. So if you're praying God destroy or kill my enemy, he's not going to answer the prayer. But if you say, Lord, prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy, he will do it. Your enemy will not die, but he will not be happy. He, he would see the favor of God upon your life and say, wow, I meant it for evil. Look what God has done. So yes, God knows how to deal with your enemy, but your prayer must fit his will. He is not willing that any should perish. It is the, his desire to heal you. So when you pray for healing, you are praying according to his will. All right? So we ask specifically, we ask according to his will, and we ask in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We don't ask by our own bravery, but we ask in the name of Jesus. And then we ask in faith. Now, asking is what we do in prayer. And if you've been praying, I'm sure that a lot of asking has gone out. Some desperate asking, some threatening asking. You know, sometimes people give God a threatening notes. If you don't do this by Monday, you are not Jehovah. You know when people don't pray those prayers, I say, you, you alone, you will decide for all of us whether God is God or not, just because of you, your little job you want. <laughs> what if the early disciples had prayed that prayer? Lord, if you don't deliver me from these lions, then you are not Jehovah. You wouldn't be here. Your, 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 personal, your personal issues does not determine the nature of God. God is bigger than your personal issues. But people have been praying, and I'm sure there have been uh, ultimatums given to God. There have been uh, threats given to him. But God has mercy. You know, sometimes when your prayer is even wrong, he has mercy and answers them. 
If God was just to mark our prayer as a teacher marks a text paper, none of us, our prayer will qualify. But even when we ask sometimes in unbelief, he answers. Sometimes you ask and you are not too sure, but God answers because his grace is sufficient. His mercy is sufficient. So after you've asked, you have to receive. You have to receive. First John chapter 3, verse 20 and 22. For if, 1 John chapter 3, 20 to 22. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence with God. And whatever we, whatever we ask, we receive from him. Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. How does a person receive? Now in talking about prayer and receiving, John talks about the heart, the heart condemning us or not condemning us. The first place you receive answer to prayer is in your heart. Before the answer is in your hand, it's going to be first in your heart. It's going to be in your heart. And that's very important, you know, because many times we pray and we say, God, do ABC for me. And then you, you wonder, how am I going to know whether I've received it? The first place to know whether you've received the answer or not is in your heart. What do I mean by that? Now, if normally in, in the natural world, if you order for something, you order for uh, a product and it's shipped to you, how are you going to know that the order you place has been shipped to you or that you're going to receive it. Normally, they'll give you a notice. It could be an invoice. It could be a bill of lading. It could be a, a slip of paper. When I was in secondary school, uh, when you receive the parcel, normally, which is money transfer, they give you a small pink slip. And anybody who gets that pink slip uh, from the post boy is a happy boy. Uh, because you know that money is coming. There's a money order coming from the post office to you. These days, I don't know how it comes. Um, um, MoneyGram and uh, Western Union and all of that. I don't know what cards they gave. I haven't received Western Union before in my life. Um, so I don't know how, how it's done. But I suppose that something comes to you. And, and, and you take that piece of paper and you know you have the assurance that you've received. Now, have you gotten the thing in your hand? No. Is the money in your hand? No. Is the package in your hand? No. But you know that you have what you have requested for because you have an invoice or a bill of lading. It's the same way when we pray. How do you know you have received? You receive first in your heart. Your heart doesn't condemn you. So you pray. You pray about something. You say, God, I, I want you to do A, B, C for me. And, and somehow times after you've prayed and prayed in your heart it's deep down inside you there is a calmness inside you that makes you know that God has heard your prayer that calmness in your heart is your heart not condemning you and that is the receipt to tell you that what you have prayed for has been answered all right now so that's the first place you receive it in your heart. Now, the moment you receive it in your heart, you have to believe it. So when you read that, like what Mark, Jesus said in Mark, it says, and when you pray, believe you have received. Believe you have received. Believe you have received. So if I get the invoice, I have to believe I have received. Do I have the object? No. Do I know it's coming? Yes. Why? I have the invoice. I have to believe I have received. If I take that invoice and burn it or throw it away or lose it, I will lose the package when it arrives. So that confidence you have in your spirit, you must never lose it. You know, many times people pray and in the place of prayer, we have deep assurance until we walk away from the place of prayer. And all of a sudden, doubt 
assails us. What is the doubt trying to do is causing you not to believe in what you have received in your heart. And so many times people will, will pray and sometimes in a prayer meeting, there's a deep assurance. You believe you have received. You believe you have received. You walk away from there and all of a sudden doubts come into your head. You say, ah, I thought I had received. Ah, maybe it was just me. It was just my emotion. It was just my feeling. Now, when you do that, you have negated the receipt. And when the package comes, there'll be nothing you can use to claim it. So, when you pray, he didn't say when you pray, receive. He says, believe you have received. Believe you have received. He didn't say when you pray, you receive. He says, believe you have received. How do you know? In your heart. Believe you have received. Do I have it? No, the having comes later on. But he says, believe you have received. Somebody say, I believe I have received. You have to believe it. I believe I have received. I believe I have received. I believe I have received. Believe you have received. You receive it in your heart. You receive it also with thanksgiving. You don't wait for the miracle to touch your hand before you say, thank you, Lord. You say, thank you, Lord, when it registers in your heart. As a matter of fact, when somebody sends you a package and you receive the notification, you can send a message back to the person and say, thank you. Has the money come? No, but I have the evidence. Thank you. Thank you means I have full confidence that this receipt works. I have full confidence that what I have in my heart is going to materialize. You receive in your heart, you receive with thanks given. And then Jesus says, then you shall have it. You shall have it. So you ask in prayer, you believe you have received, and then you shall have have it. Have it is the physical manifestation of what you ask for, which you believe for, which is now in your hand. This is where faith kicks in. This is the last process for receiving anything that God gives you. You take it by faith. In Acts chapter 3 verse 6 and 7 we know the story of the man who was healed at the gate called beautiful the Bible says uh, when uh, Peter and John got there Peter says silver and gold I do not have but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk is that a word of God yes is that a command yes at that material moment is the man healed yes Peter said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, if Peter had said that and moved on, the man would still be sitting there. Because look at what happened later on. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. At what point did his feet and ankle bones receive strength? It was when he was lifted up. Not when he received the word in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Potentially he was healed, but he didn't have it. Because he had to take a step of faith. He had to do something. He had to act out what he believed. And so Peter reached out, lifted him up. His feet and ankle bones are strengthened and he starts walking. When we are receiving from God or we've received from God, sometimes it requires that we do something to show that what we believe we have received, we actually believe we have received it. So you ask, you receive, and you have it. Thank you for listening to Living Word. To interact with Pastor Mensah Otebil, like his page on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter at Mensah Otebil. Email 
Otterville at centralgospel.com or call plus 233 302 688 000.